It is four minutes past the hour here, partner. Monday, March 18th. We're here with another live stream, getting you ready for another week of Ravens content. I'm Bobby Trossett, as always, joined by my co-host, Sarah Ellison. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Primary Residential Mortgage, and we have a lot to discuss. And even though this is the lead, I want to I want to get to, well, actually, our lead is Patrick Queen. But what I'm really fired up about, which feels like the lead, is an announcement that we have coming up in the second half of this hour. Right. And I know it's I know you're fired up about it. I'm fired up about it. It's gonna bring you to Baltimore. It's gonna bring us together for only the second time ever. So third. I'm pretty oh third. Oh yeah. I, I forget about Vegas. It's becoming it's becoming a norm here. <laughs> but anyway, so that that will be coming up on deck. First and foremost, we'll begin with Patrick Queen's message that he had to some Ravens fans, as he specified, some Ravens fans who have yep. been vocal to him since departing for Pittsburgh and free agency. He had a message for, for those folks over the weekend. Odell Beckham Jr., his goodbye to Baltimore that he put up on Instagram last night. A bunch of free agency moves that are relevant to the Ravens and Lamar Jackson being hilarious on social media in the offseason. What else is new? Lots to get to. <laughs> Lots to get to. So let's start out. Let's start out with Patrick Queen. Yeah. Who, Bobby, the last time we had heard from him, he was excited to embrace the villain role, as we know. Uh, but it sounds like there is a segment of Ravens fans that uh might be bothering him. So um on March 16th, that was Saturday, right? Saturday, Saturday. he says, honestly, bruh, y'all can STFU now. It's Ooh. not even yeah. <laughs> It's not even that deep for us players until game week, and y'all can't understand the fact it wasn't up to me. I gave y'all everything I had. Now when it's time for me to do what I need, y'all hurt about everything I say. Go touch some grass and fill the void in y'all life to one still showing love, even with the switch, this is not to y'all. So, Bobby, what was your reaction when you first saw that tweet? First reaction was that this was a reaction to the vocal minority. I really believe that like there are a small percent, there's a small percentage of, of the Ravens flock that are dragging him hard to the point where it warranted this kind of response from him in his mind. I think most of us who understand the business of the league understand this is these guys' livelihoods. It, it doesn't it doesn't make it not hurt that he went to a bitter rival, but you understand, right? You can understand the business side of things. And so I think some have gotten under his skin a little bit, clearly by this reaction. And uh, ultimately, you know, PQ, just 24 hours prior to this, I saw a lot of reaction from some within the fan base that were like, well, wait a second. <laughs> Didn't you just say you wanted to embrace the, the role as a villain? Yeah. And I think that's a valid response. Yep. But I also understand that, uh, this, this is a parting message in a way. This is something that is bothering him. I think he's reading every single mention that comes in on Twitter, which again, I don't think that that's a, um, that, that to me is only a percentage. I don't think that represents this entire fan base's view of him at this point. Um, so that was my first reaction. PQ is, is reading everything that's coming in and he reacted emotionally. Yeah, I just feel like um, that segment that he's talking to and PQ are in their feelings too much right now, <laughs> right? Like, as soon as you let the game of football, including, you know, whether it's the games or free agency and all that, get to the point where you, like, have true anger, <laughs> you're too deep into your feelings. I'm embracing I was with PQ when we played that clip last week. I don't know if we still have it. Is that the is that the top one that we have? So we have a few. Which one were you referring to? The one where he talks about being a villain. Okay, here's that. Okay. You to, to the Steelers and um, uh, why uh, why here? Uh, that man standing right there. Uh, I think just the organization itself, uh, known for winning, known for great defense, uh, and it got a bunch of stars over here. So um, I just wanted to come be a part of that, come be that extra piece to trying to win again. Uh, different or strange for you competing against exactly. the same division? It's going to be weird, but I mean, you know, um, I want to be that villain. I want to be that guy. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking to do some stuff to them. Yeah, so when I when we played that 
like as almost as quickly as it went up, we were live while that press conference was going on. I was like, I love this. Let's go. Let's have a villain role. Let's get this, this rivalry up another notch. Like I'm ready. He's the AFC North enemy. He's now a stealer. He's an enemy. But like, when I say that there's no like legit anger. Right. Wow. And so, <laughs> so, and I felt the same way about Joe Flacco and I'm going to feel the same way about Gino stone. Like it's not, it's not to a point where I'm in my feelings. So, so who, all those that are deep in their feelings, I agree with him. He gave everything he had while he was here. It was, his, wasn't his decision to leave. I'm sure he would have loved to stay with Roquan and keep that duo going and play in this defense and have another shot at a Super Bowl. I'm sure he feels like it was unfinished business, but that wasn't his choice. At the same time, those same fans that are angry and too deep, too deep into their feelings, I feel like PQ is now too deep into his feelings. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've kind of been defending his decision to take what I think is probably the best deal he was offered. And um, even though he's now the enemy, I still defend that decision. And, and so uh, listen, there's no way Bobby, you and I on Twitter get anywhere near as much blowback on uh, from fans as players do. However, uh, like if, if PQ were my friend, you know, I'd be like, PQ, lean into everybody that's had that's been so like awesome to you and have been playfully been joking with you. Lean into that and focus in that. Like I know, uh, you know, I had that big tweet last week kind of defending his decision. There's been a lot of people saying much love, but now you're the enemy and it's, you know, kind of in a joking manner. And so like, like I get means mean tweets all the time and I'm sure you do too. And it just depends which one do you want to give your energy to. And again, I do not get as much hate as he does. And this is a certain, a specific amount of time. So I'm just saying it like if he were my friend, that's how I'd advise him. Like have fun with this villain role. Like a villain, a, a person who really relishes the villain role, which is what he said he was looking for to do. I envision, I envision Trail Suggs in the Steeler Stadium when they put on Renegade and he just is like boomy. Oh, boomy. And just loves the booze. It. He basked in it. Yes, he basked in it. He loved it. He's like, let's go. Like, and just like it, and it like pumped him up and just soaked in the booze. And so, Patrick, soak in the booze, you know, soak it up and have fun and don't get too deep in your feelings either. I just think that there's there's a segment of the fan base and P that PQ that's just going a little too deep with it. I'm sure they're, you know, I'm sure PQ will get over it quickly and, and whatnot until game week. And then at that time, it'll be appropriate to boo him and root against him and all of, and really all year, because we don't want the Steelers to win any games. So, um, so I think he's got to do a better job of embracing that villain role and uh, just relish it like Terrell Suggs would. Another job you would think that comes with embracing that, that role, that said role of, of a villain is not revealing or showing any sign of weakness. Right. And this tweet right here, in a sense, shows you that he is being, he's been bothered. He, he's allowed a certain percentage of these tweets, of these fans, to get underneath his skin. Yep. And that, that's not what the villain does. The villain right. has an unwavering sense of, what's even the right word? Like, um, courage ferociousness right like and so he's almost left himself vulnerable to this kind of response here he is during our live stream last friday when he was at his introductory press conference as a pittsburgh Steeler, talking about some of that blowback uh a little bit you know uh, for the most part it's really just the fans honestly which uh you know i wouldn't expect anything less uh, but as far as players, I mean, it's all been good, joking vibes. Uh, everybody's happy for me. Everybody's excited for the rivalry. Uh, so, you know, being able to go across the field and stare each other down and play against each other, it's going to be fun. Um, like I said, it's just really the fans. Everybody that I talked to, coaches, organization, uh, they, are, they were all happy for me. So, again, that was prior to the comments made over the weekend on Saturday. And then I clipped some of those videos, as did others on social media. And I'm sure – the clips then becoming viral within the fan base flooded his mentions even more than they already were, which could have inspired the tweet that came in on Saturday. Well, this was kind of funny. Well, he said it's been playful with the players, and here's a playful one for sure. This is hysterical. 
Roquan Smith reposted the Steelers video of PQ in selfie video form, just kind of like checking in with the team. And he said, where Patrick goes on like and says, hey, I'm so excited to be here. Can't wait to wear the, the black and gold. Well, what does Roe do? He reposts it and underneath he puts his own caption in there and says, stop lying with a couple laughy emojis. <laughs> well, PQ quote tweets Kevin Ostriker, who who transcribed what PQ had to say. And he says, he says one more thing. And I'm posting his text messages with the laughy <laughs> emoji. So all kinds of different intrigue here with, with what's gone on since this signing went down. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, the season can't get here soon enough. So hopefully, hopefully he can like really embrace that villain role and move forward and just like, yeah, but you're right. I think it, it was like showed a sign of like, uh, I don't know that, that you got that he got, he got got by the fan base. So speaking gotta, of broke one though. Yeah. He was asked about the fact that they were running mates and he had his best two seasons as a pro or at least a season and a half alongside Roquan. He was asked what that kind of has felt like to some who feel like he's been playing or I guess the the best way to set this up is some folks really believe that had Roquan not come to Baltimore, PQ wouldn't have evolved into the player that he's become. Here's his response. I saw you on social media, clap back at somebody, a radio person, Baltimore. Is that something to you personal that you can, without Rokon, you can be the yeah. guy? Is that something yeah. you want to show? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that whole little situation is, you know, he definitely helped. Like, you know, uh, definitely learned a lot from him. But at the same time, I got to go on a, out on that field. I got to perform. I got to play. I got to tackle. I got to do these things. I got to catch the ball. So, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, he made me. Uh, I think I was already on, on my path that I'm on right now. Uh, you know, it just took a little time, and I started hitting that stride the third year, the beginning of the third year. And once he got here, it just even helped me even more. So um, now it's my time to go out there and lead and bring somebody else up. So, Bobby, we said on this show several times, like, we acknowledge what he just said. I felt like Patrick Queen uh, – heading into year three, which is when they traded for Roquan was progressing. And part of that though, is that he moved from Mike, the Mike linebacker over to the weak side. And I just felt like that felt like a better fit. But, and I appreciate that he also was like, yeah, I mean, he helped listen. It helps anybody to have a good player on the field with you. I mean, it's going to help. And so I'm glad that he acknowledged that and wasn't like refusing to, 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 you know, uh, give any credit to Roquan. So, but he for sure was progressing, especially by being in a different role. And, and at the same time, when we're talking about that guy, what does it mean to you to be that guy? And so to me, that guy is uh, what Roquan did. And when Roquan came in, the defense was absolutely transformed. It went from an okay defense to going back to being a great defense that we're used to in in Baltimore, he's a leader in every sense of the word. Roquan is. You would never, you would never see him like get got by the fans, right? He just, he, it wouldn't happen. And so, would I be surprised? I mean, he's in, he's in Pittsburgh, who also is known for good defense. It wouldn't surprise me if he played at a Pro Bowl level. That being said, that doesn't mean he's that, like that, that guy like Roquan. You know what I mean? And so that there is a reason why the Ravens chose Roquan over PQ. And so I could see him having a Pro Bowl level kind of season, but I just don't think he's going to be that all pro leader that everybody looks to in dire moments and is going to pick everybody up. I just think that that, that is Roquan. And I, I hope that's not bad mouthing PQ because I think he's an, I mean, anybody that's that can be at a Pro Bowl, I mean, that's an excellent player. It's just, it's just another level with Roquan. Jeremiah A checking in from the live chat with a super chat donation. He says, honestly, to me, it's the fact he said he wanted to be a villain. Then goes on to have thin skin, at least in this moment. Uh, you got to own that hate and poke fun at it, i.e. Yeah. T-Sizzle. And that's kind of what we were getting at a minute ago. I think you're spot on, Jeremiah, for sure. So before we get to the Odell Beckham Jr. conversation, which is interesting, being that he put up an Instagram post last, last night that definitely warrants some reaction, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Primary Residential Mortgage, and they want to know, are you feeling overwhelmed thinking about the home buying process? If that's the case, sometimes buying a house can feel like a marathon, but at PRMI, loan experts bring the finish line to you, and here's what they provide. 
accessibility. They've got 24 branches where you can experience a local feel, yet a national footprint. They serve just under 2,000 families in 2023. They've got a great reputation and customer satisfaction, a 4.95 average five-star review score. They offer a variety of different loan options with processing and underwriting happening in-house and locally. PRMI is able to provide smooth settlement from start to finish. So whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance an existing property, the professional team at PRMI is here to help. And the best part is for you, you, they're now featuring an exclusive incentive. So from now until July 1st of 2024, PRMI is covering the cost of your appraisal up to $550. You can redeem that by applying through the PRMI Mid-Atlantic website. All that information is found in the show notes below. So reach out to PRMI today so they can help you make your dream of owning a home a reality. PRMI is an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 3094. And what do you think of their Photoshop skills there? Well, partner? that's what made me, I, I hope I didn't throw you off. Like as soon as you put that up and I saw, I saw you there, I thought that, that made me laugh. I just think it's a fun ad there. It's perfect. Oh, goodness. All right. So OBJ, hadn't heard from him on social in a while in terms of what his potential, potential plans could be. We know he is no longer going to be a Baltimore Raven in all likelihood based on last night's social media post. I'll read it for you. Let's go big screen for this on Instagram. Uh, swear on everything. I appreciate the flock more than could ever imagine. Did everything I could with the opportunity I had. Let me just make sure this logo is out of the way. Did everything I could with the opportunities I had. Wish I got to do it big for y'all with a ring emoji. Thank you for the vibes to the city of Baltimore. I F with y'all forever for real. And most importantly to my brothers over there, this S is a lifetime sentence. I love you all. Biggest trus. Bunch of different emojis. Clearly, Sarah, saying goodbye to Baltimore. Yeah, which we knew was coming. And, you know, you always had like maybe a 1% thought in the back of your head. If he doesn't find, you know, somebody else, would he come back, you know? Um, so, I mean, I guess there's still like a half a percent shot. You never know, but... Um, I could see OBJ wanting to move forward where he would get, um, more targets, you know? So lots of people responding to him there, Lacey DaCosta, your family forever, Pete, Patrick Queen, forever. One of them, um, heart emoji. Ing. <laughs> yeah. Ing, our guy. Ing Ing showing love. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny. Cause, um, I was chatting with you and your dad, you guys were on the road this morning and he was asking about OBJ was the contract worth it. And, Listen, if you just if you just purely bring it down to production, I told your dad, and I'll say it here, I felt like he probably could have been paid a third of what he did based off of the production that he gave. Right. And um, but we said from the beginning, and I still stand by this, you just put yourself back in early April and the contract situation with Lamar Jackson going on for two years. And in and trade request from Lamar Jackson. And it was just like, it just was miserable. It was miserable. And it was like, what's it going to take to get this done? And, um, there's no doubt in my mind that when Lamar asked for OBJ and the Ravens went and got him, that helped. It helped. And so uh, you just listen, he, and then he came back and he had an MVP year. And then OBJ came here and was nothing but selfless. The complete opposite of the reputation we heard before he got here was a great mentor to the young guys, especially Zay Flowers, and and just came in here and did nothing but play as hard as he could and give everything he can. And I feel like he did connect with Baltimore. So um, it's probably the right move to go ahead and move on. Uh, but it was 1000% the right, I mean, in April, holy moly, was this like a godsend to have this done. And, uh, and so for, for me, I'll always appreciate having OBJ, OBJ here. And I'm glad that we got to know him better. It would have been better if there was like a December or January OBJ, if he like was the guy in that AFC championship game, like that would have made it better. That really would have made all the money worth it, but that's not how it happened. And you wish it did, but you still got to go back to like just the the other ways he contributed, and I don't think you, I don't think it'd be fair to overlook that. I don't think it'd be fair to pretend that that impact wasn't significant. 
Yeah, well said. Here are the final numbers on his 2023 and his lone season in Baltimore. 599 receiving yards, three touchdowns, a 93.8 passer rating when targeted, and 1.80 yards per route run. So uh, in some ways, a a lot left to be desired, Mm -hmm. but he's still going to be around. There's some rumblings that the Jets are interested. We know that the Ravens overpaid him a year ago, which ultimately canceled his trip up to New York. And there we have it. So I would not be surprised if he's potentially catching passes for Aaron Rodgers uh, this upcoming season, but we'll see. Free agency process will continue to play out for him, and the Ravens are going to have to bring in some more talent, whether that be through, well, it's probably going to be through the draft at this point if it's a wide receiver, but that is that. You ready to, we almost got 2,000 people in here, so we might as well get to make the, an announcement. Should we get to the big fish? Let's let's make an announcement. And after the announcement, we'll get some more free agency news. Yeah, we do. We have more free agency news to cover, some Lamar social media stuff. We've been teasing this for a long time, and we've been working on this for several weeks, if not a month at this point. And it is about the 2024 NFL draft. You and I, the last couple of years, have done what we refer to as marathon live streams on the opening night of the draft, followed by normal content after day two and day three. We will have normal content day, days two and three this year. But on top of that, we're going to do something that really legitimizes and continues to legitimize what we're building here in Baltimore. And we're going to give you guys an opportunity to be a part of that with us. Our first ever in-person recording at Soundstage together in Baltimore, right across from Power Plant in the Inner Harbor, Thursday, April 25th, 2024 at 7 o'clock, catered by our friends at Clean Cuisine. We're going to have special guests. We're going to have memorabilia. We're going to have giveaways. And this, for us, is just a, a, a next step to continuing to build what we're so fired up about. Sarah's flying in for Columbus for the night. She'll be out the next morning for her Literally. youngest daughter's birthday. <laughs> You're the best. You're a rock star, and I cannot wait to do this with you. It is now live. This is, there's uh, information on this included in the show notes below. 40 bucks. It includes a premium tailgate buffet, cash bar, opportunities to get involved with us, players. Uh, just There's going to be much more on this in the coming weeks, but we just wanted to make you aware of it, and it is now live on Ticketmaster. I'm going to put it in the live chat right now when you get your reaction time in here, uh, but just know. We are so, so excited about this opportunity, and the planning now begins, and it is now live. So if you want your ticket, you want to secure your ticket, uh, 500 only, you can do it right now. 500 spots, yeah. So it's funny because because I live in Columbus, um, you know, I go out and about and have my normal days. You'll tell me all the time that you'll go out and go work out at the gym or whatever, and you'll see fans of the show constantly come up to you and and this and that. and. Uh, not too many people in Columbus are, are listening to the vault. And so um, I feel like it's going to be an op- really the first opportunity that, you know, that I'd be in- able to interact live with uh, some Ravens fans there in Baltimore. So um, definitely uh, looking forward to that and looking forward to just an amazing draft night. I'm excited to be at soundstage. Never been there before. Um, just excited. It's just going to be, it's just going to be off the charts. I'm going to fly in. I get there at like, 12, 12 p.m. on Thursday, and I'm flying out 10 a.m. on Friday to get home. So this is going to be a blast. And I just want to say, because I feel like it's needed, I have zero interest in the stage of life that I'm in to deal with the business side of this. And I know, for I know, but I don't really know because you're the one who's been doing it. I just want to thank you for putting together all the work. I don't know if people understand to get the venue, to get the sponsors, to get the, the website up to get the, the artwork that is here, like all of it, you have done all of it. And I appreciate you and all that you're doing in the, in the hard work you do on the back end. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's, it, it was a lot, but it's, it's going to be very rewarding and there's nobody that I'd rather be partnering up for, uh, with this on. So, you know, and, uh, along those lines, I, we do have to shout out soundstage for being open to this opportunity. Yeah. Uh, this is a big venue. This is going to fit 500. And it would mean the world to us, to everybody involved in this event, but particularly to me and Sarah, 
if you would be willing to not only buy a ticket for yourself if you're interested, but also share it with your family group message, share it with your Facebook group, share it with your Ravens group message. Like this is a great opportunity for us to kind of continue to legitimize our footprint in Baltimore. And we promise that it will be an event worth coming to. And you're going to still be able to watch the draft. It's going to be a live show. Mm -hmm. It's going to be sort of open. It's like not, it's not restricted seating. So you can get up, you can walk around, you can interact with us. You can interact with the folks that we have coming out. And I just, I can't stress enough. If you've been enjoying our show, if you've been on board since the jump or anywhere in between now and then, um, it, it would really mean the world if, if you guys would be interested in coming out. So uh, thank you to Soundstage. Thank you to Jerry and Aaron from Clean Cuisine. They've been one of my personal sponsors, Sarah, as you know, all football season long now into the off season. They're based out of Owings Mills right around the corner from the castle. And that's that's how I eat clean. And now everybody that's uh, that's coming out here is going to have a chance to to check out and enjoy their premium tailgate buffet uh, coming up on Thursday night, April 25th at 7 o'clock. So thank you guys for being willing to listen to this. Much more to come. And now tickets are live. You can go get your ticket right now on Ticketmaster. I, I'll pin the comment in this chat after we get off. And for, in the meantime, there's a link that we have included in the, in the top of the show notes. So thanks to everybody. And now let's get to some more free agency notes. And we'll begin with Snoop, Tyler Huntley, who we know was probably not coming back to Baltimore, Sarah, just because of, at this point, his rookie deal is now up, right? He's a former undrafted rookie. And with Lamar being on that mega deal, you kind of have to pinch pennies where you can. And so now Baltimore's quarterback room will look like Malik Cunningham and Josh Johnson behind Lamar. But Snoop's not going very far now, is he? <laughs> It just continues the trend where like, you know, people might be leaving the Ravens, but they're not leaving the AFC North for the most for, for with, with a lot of the big names. Uh, it's now, you know, PQ, Geno Stone and Al Huntley. And uh, I can't remember what other former Raven came back to the Steelers, but it's it's crazy. So and then people just keep joining. We'll, we'll get to the other guys that join the AFC North. So it just continues on. I wanted to get into a little bit to the details of the deal because I think it just once again um, answers like some questions like the Ravens have lost a ton of people, right? Yeah. But are they people that the Ravens were even trying to get back? And I think we know the answer with Gino and PQ. And I think this gives us another answer with Huntley where uh, Jake Trotter over at ESPN said that the deal was one year for the veteran minimum. So you can't pay him any less. Right. So I'm sure if the Ravens were willing to give him the minimum, he would have preferred to come back as the number two quarterback. But right. instead, according to Jake Trotter, um, uh, Huntley is going to be the number four quarterback behind Deshaun Watson, the, the, behind Jamace Winston. And they still have uh, Dorian Thompson, Rom uh, Thompson Robinson. And so he's going to be number four. And they're just looking for a lot of insurance. I think obviously the Browns went through craziness and then you know blindly walked into Joe Flacco and and got lucky with with landing him kind of last second so they're trying to uh get all the insurance in the world and um there's no doubt in my mind that if the Ravens wanted to give him a, a veteran minimum deal uh he would have come back as number two yeah so but I think he has enough tape out there uh backing up Lamar that um even though he is a pro bowler uh <laughs> based off of people not being able to go that had made it in front of him. He was an alternate. Um, love Huntley. He's just, he's such a great guy. The biggest smile, you know, you love him. It's hard not to love him. And at the same time, uh, there were just too many times where, where the Ravens just absolutely plummeted whenever he came in. And that might be the case with a lot of backups. Um, but I think you got to try to get better there if there's, you know, in case of another injury and knock on wood, my goodness, please, no injuries to Lamar Jackson. But the Ravens just can't plummet time and time again. Every time Lamar goes down, you got to have somebody who can win, you know, more than than Huntley did. And Snoop's now in a position where you never root for injuries, but it certainly wouldn't hurt his case if there's injuries in front of him throughout training camp into the season, right? Because if he's number four 
you probably start the year on the practice squad and yeah. something's got to give in order to get to the 53, which cert- there was a lot of giving last year in Cleveland, to your point a second ago, which resulted in Joe kind of leading them to the promised land for what would have been yet another uh, irrelevant season. So we wish the best for Snoop. Uh, but man, this AFC North division continues to generate headlines and buzz. And that wasn't the only thing that Ooh. happened over the weekend. Are you kidding me? The Chicago Bears ended up trading Justin Fields for just a 2025 sixth rounder, Sarah. Oof. It goes to a fourth round pick based on playing time. But we're talking about a mid round pick for a guy who many felt like wasn't the issue. He wasn't the issue in Chicago. It was what was around him or a lack thereof. It was a managerial side of things. He's going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's now in the AFC North, and the Steelers quarterback room goes from, what, Pickett, Trubisky, and Mason Rudolph to Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. That's a legit upgrade. It's a legit upgrade. And listen, while I still think this is the fourth best quarterback room in the division, it's still saying something that it's a step up and probably a big step up from what they had last year. And last year they made it to the playoffs. So I I do think it's an upgrade despite it being the the fourth best quarterback room in the NFL. And, you know, just a couple of thoughts on this. Number one, there was more news that came out of why the Steelers even needed fields in the first place with Pickett leaving. So the, the story on that apparently is that Mike Tomlin had told Kenny Pickett that he was going to um, compete for a starting role. Then he finds out via social media that they were trading for Russell Wilson. I think it was Wilson's post himself that that's how Ooh. you find out. You got to let your, you got to let you, your, yeah, your previously starting quarterback. No, I would think firsthand. Yeah. So he sees that he talks to Tomlin and Tomlin's like, yeah, you're still going to compete. Like I said, you're going to compete for the starting role, but he tells him that, that Russell Wilson's going to get the first team reps to start. And Ooh. so Pickett's like, okay, I, I want to be gone. Now, of yeah. course, Pickett's in like a, a worse place in terms of like, now you're, now you're going up against a guy who just got a second contract about the same time as Lamar, a few weeks ahead of Lamar. Right. And he's not going anywhere. Whereas Russell Wilson, there's a chance that he may like, f- you know, flame out like he has I- in Denver. And even if he doesn't, like it's still not a long-term deal. Like you're going to go w- with the Eagles. So I totally get Pickett wanting to leave. It's like, listen, you, you it's kind of like a PQ situation. You clearly don't want me. Yeah. Uh, so I want to go somewhere where I'm wanted. But at the same time, he's, he's in a tougher situation to get a starting role. Meanwhile, Justin Fields here, A, I sure hope we'll see a decline in Pittsburgh Steelers fans calling Lamar Jackson a running back, okay, number one, because Justin Fields uh, runs quite a bit. And number two, um, like, on the on the Chicago Bears side, it, people are like, why did you do this? Like a six-round pick, why, didn't, why not wait until, or keep him as your backup, or wait until somebody gets injured in training camp or the beginning of the season, you could have gotten more. So the word coming out of Chicago is number one, they didn't want Justin Fields on the roster to make um, Caleb Williams, like if he's not playing well, there would be like a a cry to start Justin Justin Fields. And so they weren't trying to have that. And they said they wanted to do right by Justin Fields and try to find him a spot earlier than later. Am I frozen again? I think so, Um, which I'll continue to talk here. But Pittsburgh just did right. If anybody did right, Pittsburgh did right. Think about the low-risk, high-reward decisions that they just made as a franchise. Denver's going to be on the hook to pay Russell Wilson's 2024 salary, which is something just north of $40 million. Absurd. The veteran million, uh, excuse me, the, the, the veteran minimum, meanwhile, is all Pittsburgh's on the hook for, for Russell. Then... Justin Fields, as we all know, is still on his rookie deal in Chicago. So for Pittsburgh, it's it's or was on his rookie deal in Chicago, I should say. This was a no-brainer decision for the Steelers, who can now, because of how little money they have tied up in the quarterback room compared to other teams, kind of like the Ravens, they're going to be able to team build, unlike or unlike other organizations, uh, can this offseason. So look, 
I, I don't know what they're going to have in Russell. I don't know the type of fit or what he has left in the tank. He certainly showed last year, I think, that he's worthy and continues to be worthy of being a starter in this league after really a dud first year in Denver with Nathaniel Hackett and company and, and how much dysfunction there was there. So, look, I wouldn't be sell. – I'll say this. I wouldn't be celebrating this the way I've seen some Ravens fans. Because even if Russ doesn't work out, Justin's playing with house money at this point. Things couldn't have exactly gone worse for him. And so all of a sudden, if you're Justin Fields, you're at a point where, all right, let's go. I'm ready to prove myself. So that's that. What do you guys think of the move? Because it's definitely one that's going to be talked about and has been talked about for quite some time now. And let me go ahead and and pull in some slides here while Sarah makes her way back into the stream. I can't believe that Denver's in a position where they're going to be on the hook to pay that kind of money for a guy who's not going to make one start, play one snap, right? Not play one snap if you're Russell Wilson for the Denver Broncos. Okay, here's some updated cap information from Brian McFarland, Raven salary cap analyst who tweeted, with all transactions now accounted for, the Ravens are presently $13 million under the cap. They're going to need most of that just for future expenses, which he has in his cap space outlook chart here, uh, but still have yet to restructure any contracts. So they do have the ability to create cap space for future signings. We're definitely going to have to have Brian McFarland on at some point here, and we will start to kind of transition to NFL draft coverage as well. I saw some of you who were commenting on that. But some more free agency nuggets as well. Jadavian Clowney obviously remains unsigned. Looks like he's going to be visiting based on some reports I've seen with the New York Jets as he kind of casts a wide net, if you will, after a career year in Baltimore. But Sarah's rankings for in terms of the remaining needs in Baltimore, let us know what you think. One, she has offensive line. Two, she has pass rush. Three, cornerback. Four, wide receiver. Five, inside linebacker. And six, safety. I might put corner above pass rush, uh, but certainly the offensive line is where it starts for the Ravens. There's no doubt about that. They have to rebuild. They already have begun the rebuild. They shipped Morgan Moses up to New York last week in a trade with the Jets. We know Ronnie Stanley, after a reworked deal that we talked about last week, will be back as the starting left tackle. We know that John Simpson is no longer a Raven. We know that at this point, Kevin Zeitler is probably not going to be a Raven next year. And so aside from Ronnie and aside from Tyler Linderbaum, you have more questions than answers on the O-line. Perhaps Ben Cleveland could be one of the starting guards. Perhaps Andrew Voorhees coming off the torn ACL in a redshirt rookie year at a USC could compete for a starting guard position on this team. But really, more so than anything else, I really, really hope that the Ravens try to find their future left tackle, their Ronnie Stanley replacement in the upcoming draft. Because it is deep. It has talent. It has versatility. It has depth. And it has a whole lot of ability in this upcoming draft. And you don't necessarily need to find that guy in the first round at 30 overall. You could potentially wait to what, 62, I think? 62 in the second to fill that void. So let, let us know what you think in the comment section below. What are the top five needs? What are your top five remaining needs for the Ravens as they move forward this offseason? Elsewhere. Lamar Jackson doing what he does in the offseason. This guy, man, just randomly tweeted out. He was just sitting here thinking, I could have been could on could have been on some messy or Mbappe type S. And then he went and photoshopped himself in a team USA soccer jersey. <laughs> Is Lamar bored this offseason or what? Because he has been nothing short of hysterical and active on social media. And it looks like he got a new tattoo as well over the weekend. We know this from years ago was his Truz tattoo on his chest, but it looks like he's, Oh, okay. He didn't get a new tattoo. 
He's now giving out tattoos. Is that correct, partner? <laughs> I was going to say, he he knows. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get back in here. Uh, he, he knows how to receive tattoos, but this is the first time I've seen him give a tattoo. So he is in peak off-season form here between dreaming of being a soccer player and now having like a side hustle of, of being a tattoo <laughs> artist. <laughs> Oh gosh. And then just because you, you just popped back on, this was pretty funny too. Like, oh, is he just bad. bored this off season or is he becoming <laughs> like a comedian online? What, what's he doing? First of all, our quarterback has always been funny. He's always been funny. And I love like his random thoughts and this and that. Yeah. But you know, he did say he wanted to be a billionaire and I got to say being a, uh, a soccer player or basketball or baseball, they all pay much more. They have shorter rosters and more games. So uh, trying to get him to be a billionaire. Maybe that would have been a better a better gig for him. I don't know, but I'm glad we have him. MVP. Goodness. It looks like we have a trio. Uh, and before we get to the trio Raven birthdays, yeah, we meant to get to this last week, but there was just so much information and so much reaction pouring in on the Derrick Henry acquisition that we forgot to add in Coach Prime, former Raven. But we saw, and I know you overlapped in Baltimore with him. We saw him in Vegas, and obviously yeah. he's now the head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes. But anyway, he says, King Henry with the Ravens and Lamar, Lord have mercy on the rest of the league because it's a wrap. <laughs> the NBA would have blocked this move. Wow, this is epic, but I hate the way we've allowed the running back position to be devalued. Hashtag Coach Prime with that big smile. <laughs> I have such a bias for him because I know him. and You love this guy. And I love him. <laughs> I love him. And he's like, he's he's not at all what I expect him to be. In some ways, he totally is in that he's larger than life. He's always happy. He walks into a room. All heads turn. He lights it up with his smile and his personality. So in some ways, he is that guy that we all see. But I kind of expected him to be, um, I don't know. There's there's only a handful of guys that like talk to everybody. And I mean everybody. And whether it's because they are shy themselves or maybe they're too, you know, cool for, you know, school or whatever is, is yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's what people say. But yeah. um. But like he's that way, but he's also one on one. Like he'll talk to everybody. I just remember going out to dinner one night in Owings Mills, and he happened to come in the same place, and he says hi to like the whole restaurant. Like wasn't above it, you know. And the faith talks that we had, and and just um, he. And then when I saw him at the Super Bowl, and he was like, he, you know, he like remembered, you know. He's like, yeah, we used to talk about the Lord, you know, and. Yep. So he just, he's, I love him. And you go on his Twitter account and he's just like one positive message after another. No fear, no fear, move faith. You know what I mean? He just is like, I love him. I love him. And I love that he loves this pairing of Lamar and, and King Henry. I'll give you a quick little story just because when I was on my way down to Florida uh, 10 days ago or so, I, I called like 1500 people, uh, including you because of my 15 hours that I had in front of me. Huh? And uh, somebody I caught up with was, uh, a really good friend of mine who I met through interning at the Olympics years ago in, at, in school. And he's since become a TEDx instructor at Colorado. Huh. And he just moved from Texas State University. And he is teaching a class with Dion. And wow. so coach, it's a coach prime class. Michael Burns is, is my friend who is leading it. And Dion is so incredibly involved in that university that it's not just something he's doing as a PR stunt. Yeah. Like Michael tells me, no, no, no. Like he is as engaged as anybody in the, in the entire institution in this class. And he's really trying to help the kids do what they want to do within the, within the realm of communication. So I just thought that's cool. You know, as, as much as he has brought publicity wise interest revenue mm -hmm. to the, to UC, um, he's, he's, he's really much more than that in terms of on the ground floor. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Sounds like him. He's like the way he just seems like a guy that's, that has a hunger for life and has a hunger for learning, which yeah. is why I think he sits and talks to everybody. I think he just thinks he can learn something from everybody. So anyway, yeah. We'll finish him. here with a bunch of the birthday boys. 
It's a trio of birthdays, and they're all studs. <laughs> Kyle Hamilton, Ronnie Stanley, and the great Ozzie Newsome. Happy Ronnie's birthday, today. Gentlemen. The other two were on Saturday. Oh, whoops. And, okay. uh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, happy birthday kind of weekend to them all. Gotcha. Gotcha. Love it. Hey, real quick. Did you, I was off for a second. Did you read the stuff that the, the, I don't know if you know if it was from Jeff on Clowney. Oh, the needs. I did not. Thank you. So these were. Oh these were yeah. 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 Needs. No. So, so obviously this is my opinion of the biggest remaining needs. And I took a cop out and just put offensive line. Number one, instead of splicing out tackle and, and, um, and guard, but, uh, had great conversations with people online. Some people want to see some of these flipped, which is, which is cool. I just want to put out real quick how I think these are going to be addressed. Offensive yeah. line, I think is going to be addressed in the draft because I feel like at this point in free agency, you want to, it's mostly at, at this point, it's mostly like journeyman injury question kind of guys or below average kind of guys. And so anybody that you sign, they need to be better than Daniel Falele, who wasn't phenomenal and may not be ready for to be a full-time starter, probably isn't, but you want to make sure if you're going to pay a lot of money, you're getting a, a big up upgrade from Falele. So I think they're going to get a right tackle in the draft. Pass rusher. I want to read this from – I really want to see Clowney back. Um, if they don't, they'll have to pivot and find other ways. There's, there's plenty of guys out there. But this is what Jeff Z uh, Zrebeck wrote in The Athletic – this morning, the Ravens want to keep Clowney, who had nine and a half sacks last year, but he's garnering plenty of interest and is going to be far more expensive this time around. The quality after Clowney and few uh, and a few other free agents goes down quickly. Mm -hmm. It would make sense for DaCosta to give the Philadelphia Eagles a call and see what it would take to land Hassan Reddick, although the Ravens have shown little interest in absorbing meaty veteran contracts. Hassan Reddick, his contract, if the Ravens, his base salary is $14 million, which is what the Ravens would have to take over if they got him, which is why you'd have the $14 million plus whatever draft compensation or trade compensation that you'd have. I think pass rusher definitely needs a veteran. I'm sure they can add in the draft later in the draft. Yeah. But you have, two, you have a young group there. You need a veteran. And there's nobody on the market that I think is better than Clowney. You could always try to bring back Kyle Vinoy, and he and he's different, right? He's the Sam Sam linebacker that can drop back and all of that. So um, I, I want to see him resign because the Ravens do need a veteran, and I and I want a good veteran. And Hassan Reddick, by the way, he had 11 sacks, and now he's on for 14 million. Clowney had nine and a half. Now Hassan Reddick's about two years younger. He's 29. Clowney's 31. Yep. But uh, I really would like to see the Ravens bring back Clowney. Corner. Uh, I think they'll add both a mid-level veteran and I think they'll draft wide receiver. I think they're going to get an Aguilar type veteran added plus the draft, high, higher draft. Inside linebacker, I think it's good, but they lost Phillips. They need depth there. Safety, they need depth there. Um, and I didn't put on here, but running back is still on this list because right now you've got Der um, Derek Henry and uh, Justice Hill is the only two healthy guys that you know. So I think they still could get a, a, a minimum salary veteran plus obviously the draft. So I, I wish I had put running back there at number six or seven. So yeah. that's how I think they're going to fulfill, fill those, those areas. Yeah. Maybe a day three back or an undrafted rookie or, you know, somebody like, I don't know if they want to bring in like a similar type to Melvin Gordon, like a year ago that just like kind of takes care of business until Keaton comes back, you know? but that'll definitely be something that needs to be addressed, the position itself. So this comment here, if you were to trade for Reddick, and he says Reddick in a restructure, you can, it's hard to restructure. He's already has void years. It's like it's the last year. There's no restructure. But to his point, this is why I brought it up, Reddick and an extension would be would be nice. But gotcha. I do think I do think they need a veteran. And and by the way, I, I'm not against Chase Young. I, I personally don't think he's the best fit. We've already got two young guys who are trying to take – to, to to realize their potential in OA and Ajabo. And I feel like Chase is still, well, not quite the same. I still He still hasn't realized his potential compared to his draft pick, right? And so to me, I want an established veteran like a clowny who knows what they're doing, or a Hassan Reddick who knows what they're doing and um, isn't like trying to find out what their ceiling is, but knows what they can bring. So I feel like you just already have two guys that are trying to trying to like, hit the next level and i don't know that 
again, I'm not against it. If if other guy if the if the veteran market is picked apart and the Ravens are left with with no other options, but to me, he's not my first option. Let us know what you think. What are your top five needs, remaining needs for the Ravens as we approach uh, sort of the tail end here of of at least the hot start to free agency and next month's NFL draft. Before we go, just in case you're just popping on now, we wanted to let you know that our first ever in-person NFL draft marathon live stream is now scheduled and is now a thing. And Sarah and I are just thrilled to announce that we're going to be doing it at Soundstage, broadcasting live Thursday, April 25th, 2024, 7 o'clock, downtown Baltimore, uh, specifically at, oh, what? let's see. Let's make sure we give you the right address. I think it's 124 Marketplace, right across the street from Power Plant in, in the Inner Harbor. 40 bucks is your general admission ticket. That's the only option we're giving you, and it'll include a premium tailgate buffet catering provided by our friends at clean cuisine there will be a cash bar there'll be players past and present hopefully still working on a few of those details there's going to be giveaways an opportunity to interact with us and uh sarah's going to be flying in for from columbus for this event and we're just thrilled to to have this now on the books in the calendar and we hope you'll join it is now live and available on ticketmaster the information is included right at the top of the show notes below so you can secure your tickets today. And we're hoping that this is going to sell out 500 tickets. That's all, that's all, that's all it's allowed in there. 500 tickets partner. So let's get this thing going. Let's go. Let's go. I'm so fired up for this. Thank you for all your work on this. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Draft night is always one of the most exciting nights of the, of the year. Thank you. Thank you for, for being open to it. Thank you to soundstage. Thank you to Clean Cuisine. And we do have open inventory that night, I should say, for overall sponsorship of the show itself right here on YouTube. So if you or someone you know is interested in potentially becoming a sponsor that night, you can hit us up at BaltimoreRavensVault at gmail.com. You see it streaming right now on the bottom line, BaltimoreRavensVault at gmail.com if you want to talk about sponsorship packages that we have available for you for a limited time coming up April 25th at seven o'clock downtown Baltimore at soundstage. So with that, if you enjoyed this episode, please like the video. If you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to the vault on YouTube and in the audio only spaces. If you've been enjoying what we're doing here and it's going to be another week of 12 noon live streaming, right? I love it. I love this time. It, so yeah, for, for the next while, I think that's where we're headed right now. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So would love some feedback there from you guys, as always. You can also include that feedback in your email at BaltimoreRavensVault at gmail.com. A special thanks to Primary Residential Mortgage for sponsoring this episode. And for my co-host and partner, Sarah Ellison, I'm Bobby Trossett signing off. We will be back tomorrow, March 19th at 12 noon for an hour-long live stream. So we'll talk to you guys soon, and thanks so much for dropping by today.